All right, so uh, yeah, I gotta get busy building this six inch and I was over at the hardware store across the street. They did not have what I was looking for. I was uh, looking for some little M3 bolts that I could kind of just uh, pinch all this stuff together. They didn't have it. Looks like uh, somebody that's building mini quads got there before me. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I prep some of this uh, carbon and everything just because I'm sure I do it a little bit differently than everybody else. And uh, it's a pretty quick way actually, um, if you have the stuff for it. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second here. All right, so this is what I use to uh, file down the edge of the carbon. Um, some of you that are probably new to this hobby ask why are you filing down the edge in the first place? Well, when it gets cut, it has these really sharp lines on the carbon and everything. And uh, what I do is I basically chamfer the edge of the carbon with this guy here, this is like a, uh, I use this for sanding down the metal, like for metal finishing. It's a scotch Brite pad, essentially, and uh, I just run it on low air, and I kind of just follow it down the path of the carbon, and uh, that's pretty much how I round these guys off, and I get a nice even thing. Uh, other people use a file, do it underwater. You don't want to breathe the carbon dust because it's definitely not good for you. Um, you make sure you wear a mask. I wear like a, a regular uh, ventilator mask I have over here, or sometimes like, even if you have just a regular painter's mask, it's fine. I use that too. Okay, so let's get into why um, I'm doing this. Mainly, the, for the most part, you wanna chamfer the edge and make it rounded off because when you come into a hard landing or something that uh, will hit this sharp leading edge, it'll actually do more damage and chip away at the carbon than it would if you had it rounded and it would kind of like skid a little bit more. That's one reason. Another reason is things like, uh, it's very good to do it on the lipo strap area where you're gonna like strap anything down or where we put like electrical tape over things is this sharp leading edge has a tendency to cut into lipo straps and you know, electrical tape and things like that where you don't want those things getting cut and something flying off or uh, getting damage, you know, popping up and the blades hitting it or something like that. So uh, that's why I do this. If uh, some of you had, you know, questions on why you have seen that being done to uh, some people's quads. I know some people don't even care. They just put it all together. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my first thing of prep I always do when building uh, this quad or I would do it with any other quadcopter. Actually, this is one that um, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway with that is pretty cool. It actually comes with it already done. I'm not sure if you could see that, but um, they've already done it. I'm sure that on their uh, router, they have a bit that just comes by after the frame is done and does that for them. But um, yeah, that is a, uh, that's kind of cool. This is a, a frame, I just wanted to see what it looked like, so maybe I could do like some little testing or something with it. But uh, once I saw it, I knew it wasn't really what I was, um, kind of looking for. So that's one I'm gonna give away for uh, my giveaway at, I believe I said 5,000. I have two frames, that's what it was. Two frames I could give away at 5,000. And then at 10,000 I wanna give you guys a, my full build. Just here it is, minus GoPro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get uh, to cleaning these up and then I just gotta find some bolts and stuff and start putting this thing together. Got all that stuff done. Hopefully you guys, if you guys have access to uh, one of those, you can do that. It makes things a lot easier. Um, you just have to remember, wear a mask. Uh, quick update, this is kind of where I'm at with the little dude. Um, not very far. I need to get one of those like uh, four in one ESCs is what I want to do. And then um, probably do like a PDB and FC all in one type of thing in here. I think that's all that will fit. Really excited to fly this guy uh this is like i said the gorilla drones um little three inch and it just looks super dope but uh yeah so i'm gonna put on these uh motors these are the ones i talked about from surge over at pyroflip and only thing i don't like about them is in the box you get this lock nut here um i like the flange lock nut uh even though this is a short shaft and a flange lock nut you have to get the low pro one and the low pro one sometimes has a little trouble when you are trying to uh you know get a good grab with your 
with your screw for it. But I'd still rather use a low pro flange nut than use this little like adapter um, that goes with it. So um, yeah, other than that, these motors look awesome. I can't wait to fly them, see how good they do on this frame. I'm gonna be using these uh, TVS 25 amps like I've been using on everything. I just feel like they're perfect for six inch because there's like no limiter or anything on it and uh, you can explode your quad quite easily. So that's always cool. By the way, I uh, hope you guys don't mind this little uh, build video like you guys saw. It's raining outside. It sucks. I can't go hike and find my quad because it's just getting rained on right now. Um, I don't want to go up there in the mud. But um, yeah, so I need to build one. I thought I would like kind of take you guys through my little build process. I'm not going to be able to finish it all day because there's uh, a couple parts I know I don't have here that I need to get. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do as much as I can give you guys some comments and then um, I'll see you guys probably tomorrow and hopefully I'll have the stuff I need. The first thing I'll do is I'll put all these motors onto uh, the frame here. These are the arms on the frame and uh, like I said I forgot some things. One of the things I forgot was uh, the Loctite for these motors so I'm just gonna get them on there and then uh, that way I could see where I'm gonna put the ESCs and cut the wire and stuff like that. So. I use uh, this 3M double-sided stick tape quite often. Uh, it gives good like vibration, insulation, as well as um, I like to use it for pretty much just anything I want to give a little cushion to to where I don't want stuff touching the carbon or whatnot, but I like to put them underneath the uh, ESCs, like I said, for the, the vibration. Um, it kind of makes it easy to, uh, to hold on also on the arm when I do the soldering. So, uh, a couple little uses, but this is what I use. It's just, uh, like I said, the 3M, I think it's like 30 pound is what this thing holds or something like that. So, it's good stuff, um, and you'll see me use it quite a bit on my quads. Alright, so I don't normally do it this way, but uh, I don't have like all the stuff that I want, like I said. So, I'm just kind of going, kind of piecing it up. But uh, this actually doesn't seem like that bad of a way to do these so far. Alright, so this is uh, essentially where I'm at with everything. I got the uh, motors uh, soldered up to the ESCs, and I am not running the Drone Wolf PDB on this one because I'm thinking about using the all in one board that's the PDB and the flight controller. So I'm going to just use uh, this little plate here that they have, which wedges the arms uh, to both sides of the base plate and that. But uh, that's pretty much it. I am going to be running the, uh, the Aero Cam again. Um, and uh, that's gonna give me like my OSD readout and everything. I have not got a chance to try one of those boards that uses the Betaflight OSD yet. I don't think the board I'm gonna use has it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We are going to continue this tomorrow. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, I saw seen a couple of them come in. Keep throwing them. Um, like I said, I'm gonna gather those all together and I'll probably do a Q&A sometime this week. So, um, yeah, that'll be good if you guys do that. And make sure you guys always hit that subscribe button. I know I keep seeing things where things get unsubscribed, like people and stuff if they're not hitting that little bell or whatnot. I don't really know the case in that, but hit that subscribe button if you like uh, the content that you're seeing, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, peace.